Hi everyone and welcome to Lori's Live. Glad to be with you today. I'm Lori Mestis of Mestis Ministries and I am coming to you live from LA, California. Well, God has been doing these lives every day now to try to at least bring some relief and shed some light on why we're here and what we're here to do. And if you've been following me, then you know that I've been sharing with you as a believer that God has a purpose, a plan, and he actually has called you for such a time as this to make a huge difference in the lives of those he's put in your life. So in Greek, the word is oikos, and that just means your sphere of influence. But it could also mean anywhere you go, that's going to be your sphere. Any, anywhere you go, anything you do, if there's a person in that sphere, that could be the one that God's calling you to. So it's just knowing that we are literally here for a purpose and how to walk that out. So on Lori's Live, that's what I've been doing. And I just want to say, if you're new to this, I want to welcome you and just say that get ready because God's got great things for you to do as well. And I know that the message I have today is going to really help you become all he's called you to be. So stay tuned with me. Now, today, I'm going to actually talk about tips how to stay above the circumstances. Let's say even rise above the circumstances because we all know that there's a lot of circumstances going on and we really want to be able to know how do we not get caught up in it? How do we not get depressed by it and feel the weight of it? So God gave me a really cool message today and then I'm going to share a testimony with you as well as part of this. So you're going to like it a lot. So let's pray and we'll get underway. Father, thank you so much for this time. Thank you that you are in control of it because I'm giving it to you. <laughs> and this is your idea. So Father, thank you that I say what you want me to say so that you can have your way in everyone's life today. And they all said, amen, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So again, welcome. And let me say hi to some people who've come on. Hello, Berta. Good to see you. I think you're coming on from, is it Australia or South Africa? I don't know. Let me know. Type it in the comment section. Hello, Robert. Hi, Ollie. Hi, Stephen. Here's a thing that we do on Lori's Live. Please, as we go, make comments. If something strikes you, say yes, amen, whatever it is you want to do to let me know that you're here and let me know that you're engaged. And then please make sure even now you can click the react button, the heart button there under the like, love button, and um, just share it. You can literally share this right now. It's going to help so many people get free and be who God's called them to be. So praise God for that. So I want to encourage you to do that. And if you're watching from YouTube, definitely click the notification bell so you can hear more, more messages like this and like and comment and things like that. Hello, Lynn. Good to see you as well. Praise God from Chicago. Yay. Hey, Ollie. This is awesome. So let me tell you guys what is on the agenda for today. Now, God gave me these tips to share with you how you can rise above the circumstances that we're going through. Not just even the circumstances in our world, which is mainly what I was thinking at first, but we all have our own circumstances that we have to deal with on a daily basis. But we're going to make it a little bit more broad because for sure there's a lot of pressure going on for us as believers or just people in general to actually um, get caught up in and, and feel the weight of this world's situation. And you know, I really feel like um, if we are not careful, we are going to be swept up in it and it's gonna pull us down. You know, back in March, this is just before everything started really getting crazy, but when we first heard about this pandemic and everything, God had given me a word, a word uh, to share with you all and the word was, as quickly as this virus has come and spread, so shall revival come and spread. Well, that was before we were fully locked down and everything else. But one thing I shared in that video was the fact that, you know, there is this storm, you know, that we are in. But at the same token, we can be above the storm, above the waves. And I called it the faith boat. I said, you got to get in the faith boat. So we need to know that the only way that we can actually stay in that place of peace, joy, rest, 
and um, just allowing God to use us and not get caught up in it is to remain in a place of faith, trusting that he is going to work through us, trusting that we really know who we are, where we're from, why we're here, and what we're supposed to do about it. And that's what God gave me today. These tips to share with you in this form of these questions to help you determine how you can stay above the circumstance by answering these questions for you. Yes, and then in that, I'm gonna share a cool testimony that happened just today on my walk, and it all goes together. So again, thanks for coming. Hi, Robert, good to see you, praise God. All right, so stay with me, guys, here we go. I'm gonna go right into this. I'm gonna share with you the first question that I'm gonna answer uh, as to how to stay above and rise above the circumstances, okay? The first question is, who are you? Well, if you're a believer, you are a child of God. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> that was an easy one, right? But what comes along with that, you know, identity, right? Who are you? If I'm a child of God, that means that I'm already made right with God, and that means that I'm one with God. There's over 40 scriptures that say that we are one with God. So if you can imagine God walking on the earth right now, which he did, we know, before. <laughs> you know, he didn't get caught up in the social injustices. He didn't get caught up in the turmoil. He came to be an answer to that. He came to be a lover. He is love. So if we are children of God, guess what? We are love. You are love because God is love. And he's called us to walk in love. So we walk as the love of God. Now, the thing I want to say here to make sure you guys get this is that we've been talking about how to change our world the last couple of weeks, okay? And in the changing of our world, we, we've been saying that you can only change our world one heart at a time. Well, if my heart isn't assured of who I am, if my heart is really being, you know, uh, depressed or oppressed and I'm really not able to rise above it, then how can I help anybody else rise above it? So I'm hoping today that you're going to hear this message and it's going to set you free and deliver you so where you can actually see yourself where you're supposed to see yourself, and that is in the heavenly realm with God. Okay, so who are you? You're a child of God and you're one with God. Thus, you are love and you are to be his conduit of his love. All right, that's who you are. Where are you from? Well, you could say, well, I could say I'm from Chicago. Well, now I'm in LA. That's not what I mean. As a believer, we are in the world, but ready? We are not of the world. Okay, it says that in John uh, chapter 17. He, Jesus is saying to the Father, you know, that they would be in the world, but not of the world as I am not of the world. And then he tells, he's talking to the Father, and he said, that's why I've told them to go into the world. Okay, so remember this. It doesn't matter where you're physically from in this land. You're from heaven. If you believe that Jesus is the Lord of your life, then your home is heaven. I'm going to give you a couple scriptures right now because I'm telling you, when you get this, it'll make everything going on seem like not a big deal to you. As crazy as that may sound, it's the truth. And that's what's going to set you free today. All right, so let me give you a couple of scriptures. Super cool. So it says in Philippians 3, verse 20, it says, our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, we're, we're eagerly awaiting him to come back. But the fact is, our citizenship is in heaven. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, said that we're seated with him in heavenly places. Okay. Why do you think these scriptures are in there? If we believe the word is the truth, then it's the truth. All right, we are a spirit in a body. Let me go on. 1 Peter 1.17 says, we are just sojourning through here. That's why we're here. I mean, it's we're just sojourning through. That's where we're from, sorry. <laughs> I don't wanna get to the why yet. That we're sojourning through. So bottom line is we don't, we're not from here. I want you to say this right now. Say, I am not from here. My citizenship is in heaven. I'm from heaven. Hallelujah. 
Now that should get you excited and make you happy and bring you joy. Because when you realize that you're only here for a reason, which we're going to get into the why, then it changes our whole outlook and our whole perspective on how we are to look at what's going on, how we are to examine it and thus experience it. Okay. So we discussed who we are. We are children of God and thus we are one in God and with God. Okay. Where are we from? We're from heaven. Why is the next question. Why are you here? Well, very simple. What did Jesus say to his disciples right before he left and was going up to be with the Father? He said, go and preach the gospel. Go and make disciples. Why are we here? Type it in your comments. I'm here to go. Just put in go if you know. If you don't know, you need to read the Bible, <laughs> okay? Because in all the gospels, Every single one, it talks about how we're to go. So you think that was important? Just a little bit. And if you're a follower of Christ, that means you're a disciple. So it wasn't just for the disciples back then. It's for every believer. It wasn't just for the evangelist. I just really want to have you guys get this, okay? The evangelist is not the one that goes and witnesses and preaches the gospel. It's every believer. The evangelist is to train up the saints for the work of the ministry, which is in 2 Corinthians 5, 18, the ministry of reconciliation, reconciling people back to God. All right? So you're a child of God. You're from heaven. And why are you here? To preach the gospel, to be an ambassador for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 as well. We have to understand this and get this. When you realize that you're just sojourning through, when you realize that you're here for a purpose and that's to lead people to Christ so that they can go home to heaven too. See, it's not just about, oh, I'm saved, I'm good. All right, let's get this. I am, it's not about me. Your Christianity is not about you. It's about what God wants to do through you. So I really want to help you get this. And in that, you'll feel like your life has purpose. Even in the chaos, your life has purpose. You'll feel like, oh my gosh, God wants to use me. In spite of what you see, in spite of what you're feeling, frankly, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how good or bad things are out there. What matters is that why are you here? Everybody says as a believer, oh, I want to know my purpose. I want to know my purpose. Well, guess what? It's written in the Bible. Your purpose is to go preach the gospel. Your purpose is to reconcile people back to God. I'm sorry whether you like it or not. That is what the word says. So I, I'm going to challenge you guys right now. Okay. It's a mindset challenge. It's a paradigm shift. You need to get over the thought, well, that's not me. You know, I, I'm, I'm not outgoing or, you know, I don't have that kind of personality like Lori has. I mean, because I know if you know me and you've been following me, I share testimonies all the time how I'm going out and I'm sharing the gospel and I'm leading people to the Lord or whatever. Um, but let me just tell you something. I do that because I said to God one day, okay, I'll do whatever you say. Whatever you want, wherever you want me to go, I'll go. Whoever you want me to talk to, I'll talk to. Because I got tired of living my life for me and disappointing him because that's what it's all about if you really say you love God Jesus said if you love me you'll do my word what does his word tell us to do to go preach the gospel okay so let's get this all right I'm hoping you're getting this today when you realize that yes you you might be thinking you're shy well shy is just rooted in fear and God didn't give you the spirit of fear a power, love, and a sound mind. So when you go forth, you go forth in spite of the fear. Courage is not that fear isn't present. Courage means you go in spite of the fact that there might be fear. But who would you rather fear, God or man? In other words, not afraid of God, but a reverential fear. I fear God over this person I don't even know. Hey, I'm going to go talk to them. But if, if they don't like what I say or if they're not interested... Oh, well, at least I pleased my heavenly father. And when I leave and go home to be with him, he will be very pleased with me. You see, I know every time I go, he's like patting me on the back. I can feel it. <laughs> I don't do it for that. I do it because I love him. 
So listen, just really take this session today and really allow it to be an examining of your own heart. If you say you love him, then you will do what he said to do. Period. You know, there's an evangelist named Ray Comfort. And Ray, he will talk to everybody and anybody, but he shares that back in the day when he was younger and in high school, he was so scared to ever get in, up in front of anybody and do a speech in class or anything. Oh my gosh, he was petrified. He would go into the bathroom before he'd had to go do his, you know, his, his speaking. And you know, he said he would be throwing up in the bathroom because he was deathly afraid of public speaking. He was so shy. But when he got a hold of why he was here as a believer, it just turned it on for him. All of a sudden, he thought, I don't really care what people think. I am here to make a difference for my God. I am here because God said, go. I'm going in honor of God. And he had compassion on people that they won't go to hell. Changed him completely. So that might be you. Maybe you're thinking, well, you know, I'm just not comfortable with this or I've never done it. Well, how are you going to know unless you go? How are you going to know unless you just start doing something? You know, listen, Witness with Confidence is the name of my course that I put together. It's an online course. I call it that because you can be confident going out there, but the confidence is, it's not even in you. It's in Jesus. There's a scripture that says that we can be confident in him and the Holy Spirit goes with you. And guess what, you guys? He's your comforter, right? He's known as our comforter. So you're going into your comfort zone because the Holy Spirit's going with you. Your co-laborer is with Christ, meaning that you're not doing this alone. Don't ever feel like you're doing this alone. God's going with you the whole time, giving you the words to say, amen. Can I see some amens, please? And throw up some hearts to God because you are not doing this alone. All right. Well, that is the why we are here. Now, let me finish and go on and tell you how you do this. Well, guess what? <laughs> you ready? How do you fulfill the Great Commission? Just start talking to people. <laughs> you didn't expect it to be that easy of an answer, but you're going to say, well, that's not that easy. Yes, it is. Start conversation. So now I'm going to share with you the testimony from today so you can hear it. And if you've come on midway through, make sure that you go back to the beginning when this is over. You do not want to miss how we got to this point. And right now you can literally click share. If you're currently watching, please click like or whatever you want to do up there because we want this information to get out to more people. And that's how it happens through Facebook. All right. Now I'm on my walk today, just in preparation. God showed me already that I'm going to share these questions with you. Who are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? <laughs> and then, you know, basically how do you start preaching the gospel? How do you get the ball rolling? Well, I was thinking about all that. And then I wanted to sit down for a second on my walk. So there's a bench on my way. And when I went to go sit on my bench, my bench, mind you, <laughs> which actually, of course, it's not my bench. But usually when I go sit down there, nobody else is there. Well, I went to go sit down on the bench and there was a woman sitting on the bench, kind of like in the middle of the bench. And I could have thought, well, I'm not going to sit there because I'd have to ask her to move over. And that's kind of like infringing on her privacy. I didn't think that. I wanted to sit down. So, hi, do you mind if I sit here with you? She said, no problem. And she moved over. Now, I want you to think for a minute. Would you have done that? I'm sure. You could put down in the comments, no. I would like to see what you think. And it's okay. Because most people would not do that. They would be like, oh, I wanted to sit down for a second. But, oh, that lady's on the bench. And I don't know her. So, I'm not going to sit there. And uh, I don't want to, like, you know be impolite and ask her to move over, right? All these thoughts that come in. Listen, I'm telling you, you got to knock the thoughts out. You just got to say, no, I don't care. I'm going to go sit down. I'm a friendly person. I'll smile and say, hey, do you mind if I sit here? Well, guess what happened? Because I sat there. We spent over an hour of conversing, but I'm going to tell you how we conversed. It was very interesting, very unusual, and very precious. All right. Let me tell you it all started. I sat down with her. I'm seriously, guys, I just wanted to rest my back for a second. So I sat down on the bench. I didn't have any agenda. And that's what I want to say too. You don't have to have an agenda. Oh, I got to go witness now. She's telling me I'm supposed to witness and I'm not comfortable. No, 
I'm telling you, just go be the Christian you're supposed to be. Go out there and just live your life and be willing to let God use you the way he wants to use you. How is he going to let people know about him unless you tell them? You are the vessel. You're his body. We are his body in the earth. He's not here. You are. You're here. You need to go. You need to just go live your life. And as you're going from here to there, just talk to people and say, hello. How are you? Hey, can I sit here? Hey, I love your shirt. Hey, what, what's wrong with your dog? And then I prayed for the dog the other day and the dog had cancer. And then I got a chance to share the gospel with the owner. It's a lifestyle and it's so fun. All right. So, and I said fun. Who's having fun today in this craziness of this world? Not many people. Guess what? God wants you to have fun being his son and his daughter. Now I'm sitting at the bench and we are sitting there and her, this woman's two daughters were playing in the, uh, just, there was like a little hilly area there and they were playing over there and they both just like, they said, hi, hi, like super friendly, super cool young girls. And they were just amazingly friendly. And I was so blown away by that. Like, hi girls, how are you? Well, <laughs> here's what happened. Turns out that they're from Iran and uh, the, the mom, which is who I met at the bench, which I wasn't sure was the mom, she, does, she, she hardly speaks any English at all. But yet we communicated for an hour on the bench. What happened was their girls came over. You know, they were saying hello. I'm saying hello. They were the cutest things ever. Twin girls, five years old, just so precious. Well, as this woman and I were trying to communicate, she, on her cell phone, she had this translation you know, app. So uh, as I'm trying to talk to her, she's like, here, you know, and then I would type in what I wanted to say, and then she would be able to read it in her language, and then she would type back the answer to me, and, and it came up in English to me, and oh my gosh, it was the coolest thing ever. I found out that they've only been here since March, and that her husband died a couple years ago in Iran, and um, and I got to tell her, you know, I said, oh, I understand. My husband died too. I mean, it was just like, there was just this beautiful bond that happened. And while we're communicating like this and getting to know each other <laughs> through a translation app, oh my gosh, her girls were so precious and they were coming over before you knew it. I mean, they were like putting their heads on their mom's lap. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> I said, my son can't, doesn't do that anymore. He's 19. And we started having this conversation. Well, before you know it, these girls, one at a time, start coming on my lap. So now, I'm literally, they're hugging me and they're sitting on my lap and I'm playing with them and it was so beautiful. So beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm telling you. When I walked away from all this, I was crying and I was thanking God for them and what God's gonna do now. So how it ended up was that we, we had this communication and then we exchanged numbers and I, we decided, I said, are you willing to you know, connect again or do you want to stay in touch? And she said, yes. And I just want to tell you that a couple times I felt like, should I say to her, um, do you believe in God? Like, you know, type it um, or do you know God? And I just wasn't led of the Holy Spirit to do that in that conversation. So the other thing I want to tell you is this. You don't always have to get God in there in the conversation, okay? You don't. You just be led by the Holy Spirit. And I wasn't going to try to make something happen. Yet I knew when she was willing to exchange numbers and that we would be in touch, I, 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 I knew, okay, this is going to be a relationship that God wants to create between us and develop so that when I share God with her, it'll be the right timing. It'll be right. She's a neighbor. I mean, I found that out today. And I just wanted to say about relationship. You know, if you're a believer and you love God, that means you're in relationship with him, right? It's not a religion. It's a relationship. Well, witnessing should not be a religious act. Leading someone to the Lord shouldn't be religious. It should be relational. And you got to be led by the Holy Spirit. So God wants us to share this beautiful relationship we have with him. He, he wants us to share that with others. And so if we're not approaching it from a relational standpoint, 
it's not going to go over well and their hearts won't be open. And how do we change our world? One heart at a time. So I left there. Her name is Zizi. Z-I-Z-I. -I. So if you want to pray for her, please pray for her. And I, the girl's names I can't recall now. They were different, but uh, I'll let you know next time. But we're going to get together. And they're living with her uh, sister-in-law. And uh, currently, they'll get their own house. But uh, I'm believing for a whole um, thing to happen now with her family coming to Christ. I see it. I see me being at their house, sharing the gospel with the whole family. And I'm excited. God's going to do great things. Who would have thought? How would I have known? I'm just going to tell you, I have hardly met anyone from Iran here where I live. I mean, I think she might be the first person I actually met in the two and a half years that I've been living here. That was ordained of God today. Oh my gosh, I pray that you all are getting this and that it excites you. So in conclusion for today, let me say that the whole way that we overcome what's going on, the whole way we rise above the circumstance, again, it's to know who we are. We are God's children and therefore we are one with him. What, where we're from. We're from heaven. We're not even from here. So we're here for a purpose. We're here for a time to make a difference. It takes the weight off of what's going on because it's not about woe is me all my life, my future, my, 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 me, 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 what's happening to my life. Oh, geez, this is really tough. No, no, because your life is not your own. It's the Lord's and he is going to take care of you while you're here. He's going to make sure you're good. But let me tell you, remember why you're here. Okay. Where you're from, why you're here to preach the gospel, to advance God's kingdom. And then how you do it, start talking to people, sit on a bench with someone like I did today, um, comment on someone's shirt because it, you see something and it makes you want to say something, say something. Every time you talk to someone, it's an opportunity to lead them to the Lord every single time. So as we finish, let me say this. If you've come on towards the end, make sure when we are done, you go back to the beginning, watch the whole thing. You'll love it. It will so encourage you. I pray as you've watched today, this has encouraged you. Please let me know in the comments section. Thank you. I'm encouraged, whatever, just so I know that it spoke to you. And now you guys, definitely look at these scriptures I gave you. If you came on later, you'll hear them and write them down and start to meditate on them. You need to do that so you can rise above. Amen. Father, thank you for this time that you bless it, that you bless the word that went forth and it penetrates into the hearts of my friends, my brothers and sisters who've heard this word today and it makes a difference in their lives. Hallelujah in Jesus name. Please love, comment and share this video right now. Click share. Let people see this so they can be changed too and make a great difference for God. I love you guys and I will see you tomorrow. Blessings.